Man, this is really sad. It really is. So, look, we really like things that Square Enix make. Final Fantasy XIV is, is now up there as one of my favorite games ever. But it was pretty sad to hear the whole NFT thing at the start of the year. Something that almost felt like Yoshi P had to tone down a little bit in one of the live letters. Yeah, absolutely. And since then, you know, a few iffy things have unfortunately came out of Square Enix. Some incredibly the best thing in the universe things have came out, like um, Stranger Paradise. Of course, yeah. But yes. this is where we're going to say they can't keep doing this, because they also had a, a stinker come out in Babylon's Fall. We cover it in this channel. Very sad, especially sad for you, a massive fan of Nier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, bad, bad times, and they unfortunately do continue a little bit. So, yep. Law of Square Enix is that for every win, you must incur a loss of equal or greater magnitude. Triangle Strategy and Stranger of Paradise are not gigantic victories. No. But somehow Stranger of Paradise is still the best game uh, ever made, bar none. Yeah. And always will be. First game to sell a trillion copies, 101 on Metacritic, true cultural reset, as people have been saying. Absolutely. But for that, mm -hmm. they, of course, had to also release Babylon's Fall. Yep, which was a massive waste of all of their money because it's immediately uh, straight into the trash. The low, One of the lowest scoring games ever just effort, basically. And how many graphics yeah. are the problem? Yeah, and they've uh, mm. they've sent out a survey like, we will fix this game. Can we have feedback on the graphics, please? Because the graphics are the problem. Nothing to do with the fact that we, you know, uh, released this full price game and this jam full of microtransactions and rams your face into the store. Also, it doesn't get anywhere near good combat-wise for over 20 hours. No, nothing to do that. It's all the graphics. Yeah. And now, perfectly mm. timed for me completing the Omega Raid series and being deeply emotionally attached to Alpha, mm -hmm. they have put Chocobo GP on the Nintendo Switch. Excellent move, fantastic. Now, Metacritic user scores don't mean that much, but sometimes they can mean that some form of, you know, <clears throat> is happening. Yeah. Critic score is 66. Hmm. Critics not particularly recommending. No, not at all. What's going on? What have Square Enix done? Well, <laughs> they've made a Chocobo Kart Racer based on the Chocobo Mystery Dungeon subset of characters, which of course means loads of FF references and tie-ins. Mm. It's generally considered to be good. Yeah. No Mario Kart, in fairness. Mm. But they've Square Enixed it. Matt, how the hell have they Square Enixed it? What have they done? It's so embarrassing that this is now Square Enixing it. They've just Babylon's fault it. This is Babylon's fault too, effectively, because you know it was it was clearly a mobile game. There's no getting around it. First of all, you get there's a premium currency called Mithril which you buy a load of like optional stuff and uh, you, you know you get your weekly login bonus so you know make sure you get that engagement in this game you've paid for uh, what? idiots yeah. surely Matt this is fair because it's a free to play title it's not a free to play title it costs 50 US dollars or 70 Australian dollars because Australia has it rough it's 40 quid for us here for a mobile game character so that's not a uh, car not really a mobile game but it literally is uh, so it's got you know Final Fantasy characters are locked behind a paid battle pass. You've got Cloud there at the end of the battle pass. What is this graphic design? Holy shit. That's uh, that's what we call um just just Japanese aesthetic for that, design. All they have is word art. That's, <laughs> that's it. what it feels like. Incredible. Yeah, for sure. yeah, uh, and of course Cloud is at the end. Yep. Which, you know, which, I think people might want Cloud. Yep. And also uh, yeah, this isn't like Ah, this will be a little bit of playtime for you. Rocket up, rocket up the the prize pass. This is buy the premium pass. Well, sorry, buy the prize pass, which as a first time bonus they've given you enough to get if you buy the game. So you get the first battle pass, the first premium battle pass on them. Then you have to win. Uh I think it was four hundred and sixty two races, just a few. with first place finishes in online multiplayer to get the uh, to get to level hit level sixty and get Cloud. Or you could buy the premium skip instead. If you want Clyde now, you could just pay for him. Oh, and uh, how much would that set me back, Matt? Um, I actually don't know, but it's an awful lot. Uh, here's one from the Square Enix blog. If you want to get more out of, the, out of Chocobo GP, you can spend Mithril to purchase an optional prize pass, which grants access to an additional set of season rewards, which are all terrible, by the way. People said the, the rewards are utterly pointless, except for the last one. So you're grinding for 40 hours to just get one prize. Beautiful. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, there's also the premium prize pass, which grants you 60 levels worth of season rewards, enough to get Cloud instantly. Oh, which is that wow. case of, they went, here is the game. You've bought it for, for $50. Here's 
here's enough currency to get the prize pass because we love our customers and you definitely want a cloud, don't you, Final Fantasy fan? Get grinding in the Switch card racer. Fantastic. Or hand over money and get cloud <sighs> now. Yep, indeed. Of course, you can do a lot more with your mithril. I'm sure you'll want to. Music, yeah. outfits, and more. Yeah. Fantastic. All, in all. this, a full price game for the Nintendo Switch, published by Square Enix. Yeah. All perfectly, all perfectly reasonable stuff. If you bought that with in-game currency that you won, but you don't. Ridiculous. No other kart racer does something like that, man. It's all got to be like this. Yeah. Um, and look, this this is a mobile game. It might not be on mobile, but it's a goddamn mobile game. Yep. And I'm sure if people were able to snoop into this, they'd probably find, you know, the fingerprints to prove that. Yeah, so that's exactly one thing. It's that, like, that updating data in-app. You've, you, you've seen it with every, if you've ever played a mobile game, you'll, you'll see it. You'll download the game, the app will finish, you'll open it, and then it'll download extra. Yeah. Games don't do that, generally speaking. Games update outside and them updating actually via the app itself and adding more download through the middle of it is a telltale example of they've built this as a mobile game first. And that's exactly what happens here. It's like, oh, you've got the game. Yeah, well, we'll update internally. Like, that's... We know you've just made a mobile game and sold it on Switch. We know you've done that. And this is a game that costs, what, £10 less than Elden Ring? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know that's a bit brutal to say, but, you <laughs> yep. know, what well, this is... Just a little bit less than um, the latest Final Fantasy game. Yeah, absolutely. This is sheer madness. It's, uh, uh, like, there's no two ways about it. It's literally just Square Enix showing their greedy side again. It's them just going, well, we need a mobile game. All of their mobile games have been underperforming as far as they're concerned. Uh, I believe that as of their last uh, earnings call. Nothing new they've been trying to do in the mobile realm has really worked out pretty well. They've had no live service success. You know, they failed with uh, Avengers getting that long tail. They failed with Babylon's Fall instantly. Everyone knew it was happening. And now they're just failing with this because they don't understand how to make one. They literally just go, well, we'll make an okay game and then jam it full of microtransactions, completely unaware. Despite Final Fantasy XIV being a perfect example of how to separate microtransactions from your game so players are happy but they'll still pump the money into it. And every time it's like, no, we will just make this intrusive. We'll make it abusive. We'll go... Why is it not working? Why is what works for Grand Blue Fantasy? Why is what works for Fate Grand Order? Why does that not work for Chocobo GP? And they just don't understand user expectations. Brutal. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, these are not waifu JPEGs. So, you know. A bit reductive, but yes. I Totally reductive. <laughs> but when I think about what... Mm. When I think about gacha spend, yeah. people want their e-boys and their e-girls. Yeah. Right? Like, it, uh, you know, I, I, can you imagine them doing something like as successful as like a banner event in Genshin? Clearly not. Uh, in this, like, no, no. So we now have a game that basically serves no great purpose. I'm also fairly sure Nintendo ran this experiment with the Mario Kart game yeah. that's on phones that also is a bit of a bust. Yeah, no, I think I think Jokobo GP was literally just, hey, what if we make Mario Kart Tour and sell it on Switch? Also, we'll sell it on the Switch around the same time Mario Kart 8's dropping a massive amount of DLC, which is like 16 quid of tracks that works out like 34p per track. And they're just going to get up absolutely buried because they're just they're just greedy and incompetent sometimes. Yeah. The game's also just a little bit broken. Like, here's a here's the thing, but for a basic summary, just a bunch of, um, bunch of fixes that are implying that this game and the XP balance stuff was just not that well considered before they fired the game out the door. No, you Which could, is yeah. just beyond beyond silly. They charge people 50 bucks for something that seemingly has had its XP curve and all of that tuned as if it was a free-to-play mobile game. Yeah, it, all, it definitely did. And it even has a free-to-play version, but the free-to-play version isn't like, here's the free-to-start version of this big monetizable thing. It is just, hey, here's the trial version to see if you like playing the game. Then you can buy the version and then start the whole thing. Because you can't, like, do a whole bunch of the content. You can't do the story mode. You don't have all the characters, stuff like that. And you can't, like, trickle your way up to the full version like you could with, say, um, I think it was the Dead or Alive had one of the versions that was just a little bit here and there. Mm. You could buy individual characters. It's not like that here. It's literally just, this is a trial version. Then the full game, and the full game that you pay for is full of this. And it, like, it's not like this is hidden in the menu. It's like you log in. Bing, 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 wahoo, here you go. Get your brain assaulted with uh, please buy, please buy, please buy. 
That's just not what we expect. Yeah. You know, you don't want a Hearthstone-style full frontal assault whenever you turn on a game that you paid for. Yep. Uh, they do have a response uh, in EN, though, just saying, thank you for playing, you know, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. Here's 500 Mithril. We also made the prize level settings for the GP mode more forgiving, and they'll share details as soon as possible. I think this reply is fitting. <laughs> How about when you release a remake of a PS1 game, you don't turn it into some free-to-play nightmare and instead just release it as a full-price full package without the need for season passes or that kind of bullshit? Yes. How about that? I think we know why they don't yeah. want to do that. There was a, there was a load of comments in that, like a replies in that tweet thread just saying, I just got a PS1 recently. I would rather buy the original Chocobo Racing for uh, for $150 and play that instead because at least I'll have my $150 spent and have the game and you know, play it and it'll be done. And it'll yeah. be advertising to me every couple of seconds. Instead, they did a bad copy of Mario Kart Tour or World, whatever the hell it's called. Tour, yeah. Yeah, Tour. So, yep. disappointing. And we expect better from Square Enix. Expect better from anyone, to be honest. But I mean, it's Square Enix. They're so strange, right? Yeah. Like, they have such incredible hits every now and then. They have these, like, big budget games that kind of push a lot of things forward. And then they just have so much weirdness. I mean, in the West, obviously, so much weirdness. And, and then weird things like this coming out of, you know, the, the home division. It's just so strange. Yeah, I think if, if I had to, like, say why, I think it's a case of just who's running what divisions. I think it's a case of, like, you have producers like Yosuke Saito, who's just, like, every, you know, he's the one who led the Nier Automata stuff. Talked to Yokotaro, got everyone involved, you know, uh, sort of sold that up to the uh, president and got that to run through. Obviously, Yoshi P is their producer on FF14 doing a great job at everything he touches, basically. I feel like if there's a load of staff, and maybe even the president himself isn't too bad on that front, he doesn't seem that bad outside of, uh, you know, talking about NFTs and stuff like that. But, you know, Square Enix's return to form has been kind of uh, kind of put in line with his return or his uh, taking the presidentship away from um, Uchi Watt, I think it was, was the previous president. But basically, it feels like there's a bunch of executives making a bunch of decisions. And if they're allowed to make decisions, we get shit like this. But if anyone with, you know, if anyone with the combination of power and actual brains gets to make a decision, and there's a lot of people there with those, then you get a good game. But instead, it's just, no, we'll just... Uh, We'll just look over at the all of the most free money and completely refuse to understand why they're getting free money and instead just go, what if we make a cutesy game on the Switch that's, uh, here's our nicest mascots and we'll just charge everyone hundreds of dollars for characters they like. Yeah, and it's sad because, I, as I said, I just finished the, o, the Omega Raid series yeah. in FF14. I'm like a, not a prime, because a prime candidate, yeah. probably played these games in the past. Yeah. But, like, I'm pretty close to a prime candidate. I enjoy kart racing games. There's a mascot character I like. I can't buy this game. Yep. If it wasn't full of bullshit, maybe I would have. So... Yeah, it's frustrating because um, the last Chocobo game, which was Chocobo Mystery Dungeon Everybody, which is a remake of... Because this is, like, a remake of Chocobo Racing. Yeah. Mystery Dungeon Everybody was a remake of the first Chocobo Mystery Dungeon, but with, like, a... Not like a remake, but like a, uh, here's the game again with like nods to the fact that it exists. It's different enough, but it's mostly the same. Uh, kind of a remake in spirit. And it w it's great. It's just, here's the mystery dungeon game. You've bought it. You've got it. There's a couple of like, like a quid for a character stuff, but they weren't important at all. There was no balance concerns. It was literally just, here is a multiple hundreds of hours of mystery dungeon gameplay because that shit is really intense and really fun. But that was it. Like, here you go. Same with, like, World of Final Fantasy. Like, here's the cutesy stuff. Here's just... We've made a game. Sure, it's not the best game in the world, but it is a pretty good game. And everyone's like, we will have that. Thank you very much. Gr great working with these Enix. You have created game. We have given you money. We have gotten game. We've got so many hours of fun, whatever else. Happy to work with you. And now they're just like... Someone in there is just turning their brains to rot and going, what if we make a load of money for free? Like, well... It's a great way to not yeah. make money. As they have proven. As they have proven. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me even of things like the, uh, the remember the Command & Conquer mobile game? Oh my god, yeah. Or the, oh, it was, was it the Peter Molyneux? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what was the one, the Dungeon game? Dungeon Keeper? Dungeon Keeper, yeah. Yeah, Dungeon Keeper Mobile. It's like, you fuckers are trying to go for free money, but that, you've, you've hurt yourself in your confusion. What are you doing? So, that's basically yeah. that. Pure survivorship bias from their piss. Yeah. 
That's I, I, I think that's basically you're yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's these big business people maybe seeing fake grand order and like, oh wow, look at that, incredible. We will apply this format to IP that we own and it will work <laughs> because oh, I don't know. Business people don't actually understand the product. Who the hell knows? TLDR though, it's bloody sad that uh, this is going on when otherwise Square Enix are doing so many cool games and things that we really want to champion. Yeah, puts a really puts a really poor taste in my mouth playing or buying Stranger Paradise this week. Well, I know I'm. You're getting, still I'm, going to. Yeah, I'm still going to because because <laughs> I'm going to reward that game. I'm going to reward the yeah. people who made that game because uh, Team Ninja's done a great job. But it's like, nah, fuck this. Yeah. So there you go, crazy shit, and yep. uh, that's it for us. I don't have anything zingy to say. Uh, goodbye. Oh. I hope you found it interesting. We'll see you next time.